Last time we studied the Quran class and we did not have much many questions or we did not write any questions from that class. It was just a different thing. Today we have the Hadith class. <clears throat> Today we will study from the book Sahih Al Bukhari. So, first student we have Ummi Ahmad. Read this hadith. Narrated Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, a man praise another man. This is Bakra, another Sahabi. <laughs> Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, a man praise another Narrated Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, a man praised another man in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Woe to you, you have cut off your companion's neck. You have cut off your companion's neck. Repeating it several times and then added, Whoever amongst you has to praise his brother should say, I think that he is so and so, and Allah knows exactly the truth. And I do not confirm anybody's good contact before Allah, but I think him so, so if he really knows what he says about him. Mm, very important thing. So this means that we cannot praise anyone in front of him. Okay. So next student, Aisha. Are you here? Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. For example, I am your teacher, as you know. Can you praise me in front of me? Can you repeat again? Can you say good things about me? Can you praise me in front of me? The answer is no. So here we write the question for this. Yes. Can a person create another person in front of him <clears throat> the answer, in the answer you will write according to hadith 2662 of Sahih al-Bukhari you cannot praise a person in front of him I will repeat the answer. According to Hadith 2662 of Sahih al-Bukhari, no, you cannot praise anyone in front of him. Yeah, I shall repeat the question and answer. Miss you. Yes. Repeat the question and answer. Question. Did you write the question? No. Mm, without writing, you will forget everything. Okay. Can a person can can person praise another person in front of him? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. And praising someone in front of him is like cutting his neck. 
Mm. Now read this one. Chapter what it had up uh, egg. <coughs> uh, exaggeration in the pricing and on uh, and one should say only what he know narrated Abu Musa and Ashari San Sanlahu Anu San Oh, Allahu Anhu Ladiya The Pohet Salaylahu Salaylahu Alayhi Wasallam Okay Okay Ask someone Ask someone Pricing another The Exaggerating In his Pricey The Prophet Salaylahu Alayhi Said You have Runes or cut the man back by uh, pricing him much. So basically, this hadith also tells us that we cannot praise anyone in front of him. Okay. Mr. Muhammad, next. The boys are turning the age of puberty and the validity of their witness. And the statement of Allah Ta'ala, and when the ch children among you come to puberty, to puberty that le then let them also ask for permission. al mughira said, I attained puberty at the age of 12. The attaining of puberty by woman is with the state of menses, as is referred by the statement of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And those of your women as have passed the age of monthly causes up to until they deliver their burdens. Al Hassan bin Saleh said, I saw a, a, a neighboress of mine who became a grandmother at the age of 21. Mr. Hmm. Muhammad. This woman, attained, this woman attained puberty at the age of nine and married to give birth to a daughter at 10. The daughter had the same experience. So what do you think about marriage at the age of nine years or 10 years of age? I think they're still young. Oh. Young. You are saying this according to this world, this era. In this era, we live very comfortable lives. Even if uh, in today world, if you go to some backward areas of the mountainous regions, you will see children grow quickly as compared to the children of the cities. They are stronger, much stronger, and they develop in better. So at that time, even the children who are just 9 years old, 10 years old, 12 years old, 13 years old, were capable enough of having their own home or running it completely. So boys used to start earning money at that time around the age of 12 years, 13 years maximum. And then they used to get married as well. After earning money, they used to have their own house. At that time, in old times, they used to make their own houses, everyone. So it was easy to make a house at that time. So after attaining the age of puberty, like this boy, for example, which is mentioned here, this boy attained the age of puberty at the age of 12. So for at that time, after attaining the age of puberty at 12, the boy used to start earning money. They used to make their own house. And then they used to get married. This was a normal thing at that time. Same thing was for the girls. Girls used to attain the age of puberty around 9 years, 10 years, 11 years. Then they used to get married at that age without having any difficulty. 
But today, the boys and girls of this age are just children. They can't do anything at all. And there was another thing at that time. For example, this boy age got um, um, attained the age of poverty at the age of 12, this boy. So it was a common thing that he may marry a woman who is uh, 35 years old or maybe 40 years old. Same thing was common for the girls as well. Small girl like 10 years, 11 years of age may marry a man who is 30 years old or 40 years old. That was also a common thing at that time. Ms. Summe Ahmed, any question? I just wanted to ask you the praises. Which kind of praises you can't praise someone? Anything. For example, let me give you a particular example. What do you think about me? Do you see any good thing in me? Yes. Tell me what you see good thing in me. Um, you are like you are giving us um, this uh, hadith knowledge with all your heart. Okay. So this is one example of praise. And according to this hadith, you cannot say this thing in front of me, about me. Okay. Because... According to this or this, uh, praising me in front of me is like cutting my neck. So this is an example. Same thing for everyone else. When you see any good thing in them, you better not say it in front of them. Okay? Uh, but okay. Even if it's beautiful, anything you can't say. Yeah, yeah? Beautiful, any good thing, don't say in front of him. But Husband can praise his wife in front of his wife. Okay. For example, I have a wife. I can praise her that you are looking very beautiful. You are very beautiful. I can say this to my wife in front of her. Same thing for you. You can praise your husband like you are looking very handsome and stuff like this. But for other... Uh, what people, about uh, my kids? I can't as well. Huh? Kids, uh, sometimes, like, it is better you don't praise them. According to this, uh, this is also for the kids. You better not praise them. But when they are very sad or when they are, like, broken hearts, you can encourage them, but you better not praise them a lot in front of them. Okay. Allah this hadith for this hadith we have another thing for the mothers. So this hadith tells us that even it is the command of Allah that when children attain the age of puberty, we must try to arrange halal thing for them. Okay. Now uh, how many children do you have? You are the only mother here. I have two. Two children. What are their age and gender? Um, first, I have son and daughter. Son is 17 and daughter is 12. Son is 17, sorry. And daughter is 12 years old. Did the daughter attain the age of puberty? My, my daughter, not yet. Not yet. And son has, of course, he has attained yes. the puberty. Now, in case of your son, this is a normal thing. When the son reaches the age of puberty, this means they feel the need of girl. We cannot deny this fact. Okay? So he is definitely feeling the need of a girl. Am I right? Yes or no? Yes, yes. Yes. So, as he is living in a non-Islamic society, this means all his class fellows are having a girlfriend. Most of them have a girlfriend. 
most of his class fellows or most of his friends have a girlfriend and his male friend they used to fulfill their desire with their girlfriends so your son cannot do this thing because he is a muslim so what shall he do now or what can you do for him to protect him for this any idea I should encourage him to fast. Fast, okay, good. And did you make any arrangement for him to fast yet or no? Yes, sometimes he fasts uh, Monday and then sometimes Thursday. It depends, but a week, once a week. Okay, at least once a week. I think this is not enough. The thing you told me about fasting, this is not enough. Is it possible for you to arrange a nikah for him? Because in Quran or in Islam, Islam said us to do a nikah. Marriage is not possible for him at this age, especially in that environment. I think it is not allowed to legally get married. So can you arrange a nikah for him? Yes. Yes, so this is what Islam recommends you to do. Arrange a nikah for him and maybe when he has his job like 24 years of age or 25 years of age, when he has his job, he can get married. But at the moment, you better arrange a nikah for him so that he can fulfill his need in Islamic way, in a halal way. Nothing wrong in it. Okay, because he needs a nikah just like he needs food and water. It is his basic need. And if he didn't get in a, it in a halal way, then he may find it difficult, especially as he is living in a non-Islamic society where everything is very easy to do. Same thing for your daughter. When she attains the age of puberty, you better try to arrange a nikah for her. If they do everything under your umbrella, it will be better for you. Rather they do it secretly. That is what is commanded in this Quranic ayah of Surah Noor, ayah 59. Next student, Aisha. Narrated Ibn Umar Allah Allah. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called me to present myself in front of him on the eve of the battle of uh, while is was 14 years of age at the, that time and he did not allow me to take part in that battle but he called me in front of him on the eve of of the battle of the strength when i was 15 years old and he allowed me to join the battle Nafi said, I went to Umar bin Abdullah Aziz, who was caliph at that time and related the above narration to him. To him, he said, this, uh, the, in this age, 15 is the limit between childhood and manhood and wrote to his governors to give salaries to those who reached the age of 15. So today we see any boy who is 15 years old is just a kid. But at that time they were um, the boys of the 15 years old were capable enough 
to fight the enemy. So you see this is a massive difference between our era and that era. Now we cannot imagine anyone who is just 15 years old to pick up weapons and fight in the battlefield. But at that time they used to fight with swords which need more power, more strength. Still they were capable enough to fight in the battle just at the age of 15 years old. Same thing was for the girls as well. Girls were much more stronger in that era as compared to our era. And there is another thing that today we see most of the countries, they have uh, set the limit of 18 years of age for a person to do, uh, regard it as a man. But in Islam, it is 15 years of age. After 15 years of age, everyone will be considered an adult. Miss you. Yes. Read the next. Uh, narrated Abu Sa'id and Gud Gudi. Um, Allahu Anhu La Din. Yeah. The Pope San Lailahu Alaihim Bud. What's the love? Said talking about on Friday is compulsory for those who have at trinit the age of puberty hmm. so this means for all of us friday bath is necessary compulsory is Friday bath compulsory the answer is yes according to Hadith 2665 of Sayyid Bukhari it is compulsory yes according to Hadith two six six five. It is compulsory. Ummi Ahmad. Repeat yes. the question and answer. Is Friday bus compulsory? Yes, according to Hadith two six six five of Sahih Bukhari, it is compulsory. Now read the next one. The question of the judge to the plaintiff to the plaintiff: Have you have a, have you have you a proof before asking the defendant to take an oath? Narrated Abdullah radiallahu anha. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if somebody takes a false oath in order to grab the property of a Muslim unjustly, by that oath, the Allah will be angry with him when he will meet him. Al-Ash'ath, inform me by Allah. This was said regarding me. There was a dispute about a piece of land between me and a man from the Jews who denied my right. I took him to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked me, do you have an evidence? I replied in the negative. He said to the Jew, take an oath. I said, oh Allah Messenger, he will surely take an oath and take my property unjustly. So Allah revealed, verily, those who purchase a small gain at the cost of Allah's covenant and their oath. So even in today's world, sometime we have an opportunity to take someone else's wealth or property legally, but it does not belong to us. In that case, 
if we take an unjustly oath, then Allah will be angry with us when Allah will meet us. For example, practical example is this, that let's suppose I do a business partnership with another man and my shares are more than his shares. Then at the time of partition, I can take some, some of his shares legally. He cannot stop me. I will just go to the court and take something which belongs to him. And this is not allowed. If I do this, Allah will be angry when Allah will meet me. So we need to be careful. Another example is this, like you are living in a non-Islamic society, according to the law of UK, both son and daughter will probably have equal share in the inheritance as far as I know. Now you can legally take something which does not belong to you Islamically, but according to UK law, you can take it. If you take this thing, then Allah will angry with you as you have broken the Islamic law of inheritance. Wherever we are, in whichever country we are living, we need to follow the Islamic law. Islamic law is the first thing, then these worldly and other laws will take place. I am not writing any questions from this thing. We will proceed to the next one. Next student, uh, Omeo Amira. Aisha. The Prophet said that the plaintiff, plaintiff must have two wit uh, witnesses, otherwise, the defendant uh, should take the Aus Ibn Shubrama said when um, Abu Azanab asked me my opinion about the verdict that one witness and the oath of the plaintiff are sufficient, I said Allah Ta'ala stated and get to witness out of your own men and if there are not two men available then amen and two women such as you agree on for witnesses so that, that if one of them two women is the other can remind her i added if one witness and the oh the plaintiff were sufficient, there would be no need for one or one of the two women to remind the other. So basically this means the one who takes the matter to the court, he must provide two witnesses. And if he cannot provide the two witnesses, then the court will take the oath from the defendant, not from you, but from the defendant. This thing is for judiciary, but still you can remember this thing that if you have a dispute with another Muslim, then you must provide two witnesses. If you cannot provide the witnesses, then the other person will just take the oath in front of Allah and he will take whatever the wealth or property is there. And the witnesses of two men or witness uh, one witness woman is uh, sorry so you normally the two men will be taken as witnesses if two men are not available then a man and two women will be taken so this means the two female witness are equal to one male witness you need to remember this thing as well. Any question about this, you can ask me. Okay, Miss Aisha has asked me a question. Oath, kya hota hai? Oath, in ke adalat mein gwaai dena. 
फर्जी आप केस लेके जाती हैं अदालत में मेरे खिलाफ केस ने मुझसे पचास हजार रुपया उधार लिया था और ये मुझे वापस निकालना तो अब आप लेके गई ये मामला अदालत में तो आपका काम है कि दो गवाह मिसाल लेके जाए अपने कि, कि जिनके सामने आपने मुझे पचास हजार लिया था अगर आपने गवाह नहीं है आपके पास फिर अदालत इस तरह करेगी कि वो मुझसे हल्फ उठवाएगी हल्फ ये जो ओथ होता है इसका मतलब होता है हल्फ उठाना सॉरी ओथ का मतलब होता है हल्फ हल्फ उठाना तो मैं अदालत में खड़ा होके अल्लाह को गवाह बना के हल्फ उठाऊंगा कि अल्लाह जानते हैं कि मैंने इससे पचास हजार रुपया नहीं लिए अगर मैंने अदालत में अल्लाह को गवाह बना कर हल्फ उठा लिया तो फिर अदालत मुझे बरी कर देगी और मुझसे पैसे पचास हजार नहीं लेंगी लेकिन अगर मैंने अदालत में हल्फ ना उठाया अल्लाह को गवाह बना के तो फिर अदालत कहेगी कि आप इसको पचास हजार रुपया वापस करो ये सिस्टम है कुछ सवाल एनी वन एल्स एनी क्वेश्चन नो सो वी विल स्टॉप हेयर एंड नेक्स्ट टाइम इनशाला वी विल कंटिन्यू दिस क्लास सो टुडे वी हैव रिटर्न टू क्वेश्चन ऑनली मिसाइशा यस मैं एक इंग्लिश